chapter 6, starting with verse 10, going through verse 13. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Here's what God's word says. Finally, be strengthened in the Lord and the strength of his power. Clothe yourselves with the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand your ground on the evil day and have it done everything to stand. You may be seated. Title today's sermon, Why You Struggle. Life is interesting. And I found that in life, sometimes God can speak to you through things that you aren't expecting Him to speak to you through. That's right. How many of y'all are familiar with the X-Men? Anybody in? Got any Wolverine fans in here? Okay, no Wolverine fans? Okay, got some back there. You know? I went to see the Wolverine the other day. Because I love the Wolverine. The Wolverine was always, I don't know why, but of all the X-Men, the Wolverine was my man. Because he had, he could just, the claws would come out. I said, man, you know, sometimes you get angry. I wish I had claws like that. I could hook some folk up. Boy, I say, get you all upset. Bring your stuff out. Ah, I got you. You know. Of course, I'm glad I don't have those. Is what you know. Probably chopping too many people up. Amen. But one of the things that always fascinates me about Wolverine the movies is Wolverine has a problem with who he is, and he struggles inside. He is a warrior. He's been through all kinds of wars, and because he's basically immortal, he has fought all these different wars and he gets to the point he's tired of fighting and so when the movie opens Wolverine is sleeping in the woods somewhere by himself because he's sworn after killing Gene Gray in the last stand he's not going to war or battle any longer so he's in the woods making friends with bears and just kind of wandering around looking like he's homeless. Struggling with who he is. David was the same way. David struggled with the fact that God called him to war. When you read about David, David was about war. When David showed up on the battlefield, folk got the behind me. Amen? Right. In fact, the very first major battle David was in, he was still a shepherd boy, and this big Philistine was out challenging the entire nation of Israel, and everybody was too scared to go out there and fight him. And David took up five stones and beat his behind. Y'all remember that? David and Goliath. But as David got older, he knew God wanted to build a temple, and he wanted to be the person that built the temple. And God told him, you can't build it because you're a man of war. And David got everything ready for his son Solomon, who actually built the temple. And one of the things that happens to us in life is we struggle because we don't realize who we are. Right, right. You know, when you, before you get saved, you're out there doing whatever. You're sinning. Let me just put it straight. And you're doing what your nature from birth tells you to do. You're sinning. Regardless of what it is. Some folk think, well, I'm sinning big and someone else is sinning small. If you don't know Christ, you're sinning. Right. Let me just put it straight out there. Because some folk think you got to do bad sins to get saved. No. The fact you were born, you were born, as the word says, in iniquity. Right. That means sin. So you're a sinner. And when you make the decision to become a Christian to say, I want Jesus in my life, your nature starts to change. And that's where the battle starts. See, if the enemy's got you, he doesn't mess with you. That's right. Come on, come on. Y'all hear me? That's right. If he's got you, the natural force of events is going to send you to destruction. 
There's no struggle. He'll let you keep doing whatever you got to do and die. Because he's got you. I look at these rock stars and stuff. They don't believe in God. They end up dying off of drugs or whatever. The enemy doesn't do nothing with them because they're already on that path. And they end up in destruction. But the minute you get saved, he gets angry. Understand the enemy wants to take as many people to hell as he can. Because that's where he's going. And he doesn't want to be there by himself. So he works to try to take as many of us with him as he can. So when you get saved, the struggle starts. A battle. In the church now, we're afraid to talk about the unseen world. We want to throw it off to the side and act like it doesn't exist. you got preachers now saying that we all want to go to heaven. Ain't nobody going to hell. The devil doesn't really exist. These are preachers, y'all. That's right. That's right. Preachers. That's right. Seminary trained, reverend doctors, bishops call themselves whatever, preaching that that stuff doesn't isn't real. It's not even though it's in the Bible. And, you know, God is like a '57 Chevy. One preacher said, in '57 he was relevant, but now he needs to kind of modernize with the time. And as the enemy keeps infiltrating the church and keeps getting us to compromise the word, the struggle becomes even greater. See, in war, people think that when you're warring against the enemy, the best, best path is diplomacy. Well, we, let's talk about it. Let's sit down at the table and see if we can work something out. What did God tell the children of Israel when they went to war? Destroy and kill everything. What? What? I thought God was a God of peace. I thought God was walking around blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, two fingers up in the air, you know, peaceful man. God is, is a God of peace. But that peace is us internally. All right. That peace surpasses understanding. He is also a God of war, and he understands that our enemy is trying to destroy us. And when your enemy is trying to destroy you, compromising him will not work. You can't talk to the devil and get him to, to ease up. Because his mission is to destroy you. Right. So once you get saved, as you start moving and embracing the new man, a struggle takes place because the enemy wants your back. So as we try to do good, what starts to happen with all of us, well, let me just talk about me, what starts to happen is no matter how good I try to be, Evil keeps trying to pull me back. As men, I'm trying to be a good husband and be faithful to my wife. It seems like all the time, somebody with the right curves and all their clothes on is walking around trying to drag me in the wrong direction. That's a fight. That's a struggle. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. If I'm a lady trying to be faithful to my husband, Denzel Second comes through. And gets my mind off of what God has blessed me with. Amen. If I'm a child, I want to obey my parents and I love them. But every time I turn around, something keeps wanting me to rebel against my parents. And say something bad or go out and smoke a cigarette. Or do something I know I'm not supposed to do. There is a struggle between being righteous and not. That's because a world exists that we can't see. So I look at the stuff that just happened in Florida, and folk getting all upset. Yeah. Reverend Sharpton and Reverend Jackson yeah. stirring up mess. Yeah. And here's why I say mess, because the Bible says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Yeah. Right. What? That's what it says right here. Yeah. Right. Okay, let me read it again. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That means it's not about Republicans or Democrats. It's not about the government. It's not about somebody shooting somebody. No, 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 no. You're looking at the wrong cause. See, but see, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to focus on stuff that's not right. If we focus on that, then we don't focus on what's behind what's going on. What is going on in the inner cities all over America right now today? Black on black crime is crazy. Folks aren't going to college. Folks aren't even graduating from high school. 
people are unemployed at amazing rates. Mm -hmm. Double digit employment in Same. the black inner city. Right, right. Babies having babies. Yeah. Fathers not being responsible. Yeah. People don't even know who the fathers are. In fact, sometimes a woman's not even sure yeah. who the daddy is because uh -huh. she's been with so many. Well, Amen. Y'all yeah. right. watch Mari Povich too. So when we see this stuff, we look and we laugh, but you know, we got to understand something is behind that causing that to happen. And the church of Jesus Christ has got to raise up and say, stop. That's right. mm -hmm. Enough. It's time for us to stop letting the devil take from us what's ours. That's right. We've got to take a stand and say, you know what? I'm tired of him taking my children. I'm tired of him taking my brothers and sisters. I'm tired of him taking my relatives. And I'm going to start fighting back. And here's what God says. He gives a general command. Be strengthened in the Lord and the strength of his power. Let me give you a hint. We were made in the image of God, but we're not God. If you think you can beat the devil by yourself, now, you're crazy. That's, that's, right. Right. that's right. That's like you going out there facing an army by yourself. By Ain't happening. You better have some some backup. Say that. Say it. You go out there in your flesh, uh, and he gonna chop you up. Right. In fact, he wants you to come in the flesh. That's right. Uh -huh. that's right. See, when you watch these movies that have good versus evil, they never mention God in these movies. They never mention the power of Jesus in these movies. There's always some man overcoming the devil. Let me give you some piece of advice if you think you can do that. Don't. Because the word says, be strengthened in the Lord and the strength of his power. That's how we win the battle. That means at all times, instead of you trying to do it, you need to get the backup. You can't go in there by yourself. You have a general who's got a whole army ready and willing to help you fight your battles. But the problem is Christians, we take the thing from the world into us when we get saved and think that we can do it on our own. You can't. The second thing he gives a specific command, clothe yourselves with the full armor of God Amen. so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Schemes. Y'all know what that means? You ever seen a schemer? Schemers always plot something. That means the enemy is always plotting to pull you down. Yeah. Yeah. Always plot, wait for that right moment. Things are going real well. Next thing you know, he, he's planting a little thing in your mind to think on. But hey, you know, uh, the wife, wife didn't look as good as she normally looked today. Maybe you can go ahead and find somebody else. Woo, you don't say that. He, he don't really mean, I, I know y'all been married for a while, but, you know, mm -hmm. look, he didn't even say he loved you when he left this morning. Mm -hmm. your, your mom and dad don't really care about you. That's why they're trying to stop you from doing things. Mm -hmm. You're missing out on all the fun. Mm -hmm. If your mom and dad weren't such Christians, that's why you don't want to be a Christian. Because it's boring to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Missing out on stuff. Say it. Come on. Young folks, you ain't missing nothing, brother. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. But that's what, that's what Satan told Eve. Hello, somebody. What did he say? She said, well, we're not supposed to eat of this fruit. He said, no, the reason God doesn't want you to eat the fruit is because he knows when you do it, you'll be like him. Uh -huh. um, He's lying to you. Yes. God is not telling you the truth. See, if he was really truthful, he wants you to be like him. Oh, oh, oh you're creating God's image. And you're not ever going to be God. And that's okay. But that's a lie from the pit of hell that God's trying to hold something back from you. He wants the best from you. And what we get caught up in is we don't realize how much God loves us because we allow the enemy to change our mind and twist us in the wrong direction. Yeah. Think about giving in the church. And I know I'm not talking about Greater Webster so Public Church down the street. Some of us don't give to God because we want to. Well, I don't want to pass to have a mama. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, the bishop. Yeah, you know, they taking all the money and lying in their pockets. That ain't your issue. Yeah. That's right. God told you to give. Yeah. You give.
give to God, right. if they do something messed that's up with the money, then he's going to hold them accountable. That's right. That's right. That's right. You do what you're supposed that's to do. But see, the enemy does that so we don't finance the work of the Lord and finance evangelism Amen. and finance growth in the kingdom. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. We get all mad at a person. Let me, what does it say? We don't struggle with flesh and blood. Quit getting mad at people. Uh, you see them doing wrong? Rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. Yes. Satan, get behind me. Amen. You see your relative acting up? Speak to him in Jesus' name. Pray on him. Amen. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come in this situation right now right and now. fix it. Say it. Uh, Say it. See, a lot of the problems we're having have nothing to do with us. It's the enemy working in our lives, oppressing us, and suggesting things to us that get us all messed up. Yeah, right. And we attack the person. Yes, yes. Stop attacking the people. Yeah, right. See, God wants us to understand that we're in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. And when Paul talks here about the powers of the world rules, there's a hierarchy of evil out there. Some of them are dealing with presidents and heads of state, and some are dealing with local politicians. Some are dealing inside the church. Yes. Amen? Damn. And folks, I'm going to give you a warning. Everybody goes to church is not saved. Amen. Amen. And the enemy knows if he can infiltrate the church and get us all focused, Thank you. well, he can win a battle. Thank you. And that's what he wants to do. That's why we struggle. We get in church and we expect the folk to act like church folk yeah. and they start acting like the world. Yeah. All right. That's right. And rather than us speak to it spiritually, we get mad. All right. Can't do it. If we want to change our denomination, you know what we need to do? Sip the Holy Spirit on our denomination. Uh -huh. Let's get some prayer going on, some serious prayer to take control, first of all, of our local church. All right. I started doing something that I haven't told y'all about, but I started doing something that anointing all the pews every night. Amen. When I come in on Sunday. You know why? Because I want the Holy Spirit up in here. So whatever spirit you may be dealing with out there, I want the Holy Spirit when you come in here. You're going to feel something different. Ooh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Some of y'all might get happy. Hey! Thank you. That's what we have to do. When they were talking about shackles on my feet, Get them off so I can dance. We need to lose God in our lives. Yes, right. That's how we stop the struggle. Amen. See, everything we do in church is meant not for ceremony, but to fight the enemy. Yes, sir. When we sing, we're fighting the enemy. Did y'all know that? Yes, sir. See, he can't praise God anymore. He used to be praise the worship leader of heaven. He can't do it anymore. So every time we praise God, we irritate him. So you should, no matter how you sound, sing as loud as you can. Thank you. I hear folk, well, I can't sing. Well, that's okay. God gave you the voice he gave you. He, to him, it's beautiful. He wants to hear that off note key. Huh? So we all, ooh, she's a little off note key today. That's all right. She's praising God. He's praising God. Because if you don't praise him, the very rocks will cry out. But I'm not going to let a rock take my place. Yeah. Our job is to pray for one another. We should be working together and praying for each other and for our community. Why? That's how the enemy doesn't get in. Instead of me getting mad at Brother Saul, so I need to pray for him and pray with him sometimes. Yeah, hey, brother, let me just pray with you. Yeah. I don't even need to let him know I'm going to say, I'm just going to pray with you. Yeah. Get God inside the situation so he can fix it so you're not fighting each other. We're on the same side if we're Christians. That's we're right. in the same army. We can't fight Thank each you. other and fight the enemy at the Thank same you. time. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. That's why we struggle. That's it. Say it. God wants to pour out blessings. He wants to move in our lives, but we keep getting in the way. Right. Right. Get out the way and let him move. Thank you. Thank you. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him do in your life what he wants to do. And when that happens, Amen. you're going to see God move. Yes. In miraculous ways. Miracles still do happen. Amen. The reason we don't see a whole lot of them is we don't believe anymore. Right. We got so sophisticated, we don't have to believe God for the gas in our car because we just go down to ATV and get some gas and get our food. Amen? That's why we struggle. So here are my final thoughts for y'all. Hear me on this. Take notes. Take notes here. Be aware of the battle. You hear me? Turn to your neighbor and say, we're in a battle. We're in a battle. 
You have to be aware of the battle. You joined the battle when you got saved. Amen. If nobody told you that, they didn't tell you the truth. Because the battle is for your very soul. All right. Second, depend on God's strength. Turn your neighbor and say, depend on God's strength. You can't do it on your own, folks. You can't. Let me say that one more time. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. So everybody say that with me. I cannot do it on my own. Come on, one more time. I cannot do it on my own. I need God. I need God. Lastly, use the protection God has provided you. He has given us the tools to defeat the enemy. Did y'all know that? Yes. Yes. You have, every, who's got a Bible? Anybody got a Bible? Like all of you can hold your smartphone up, your Bible's in your smartphone. So my Bible's in my little Kindle. Right. Amen. He has given us the tools to fight the enemy. See, it used to be you couldn't take your Bible to church because, you know, folk get all offended. Well, if you got it in your smartphone, your Kindle, or whatever, you got your word with you, the enemy starts messing with you, just open up that word. Yeah. What did Jesus do when the enemy tempted him? Man. He said, It is written. It is written. Every time the devil says something, it is written. If you don't remember nothing else, it is written, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. All who rise up against me will fall. If that's the only one you remember, that's still enough. So remember those three things. Be aware of the battle, depend on God's strength, and use the protection that God has provided. Stand your feet.